Multimorbidity, when managed in a traditional disease-centered clinical approach, often leads to polypharmacy. We will now inform you about polypharmacy in older patients with chronic kidney disease and how to best manage in daily clinical practice. There are currently 24 different definitions for polypharmacy. Polypharmacy is usually used for the prescription of numerous drugs, but it may also indicate drug prescription without indication, duplicates, drug-to-drug -drug interactions or drug-to-disease interactions. Polypharmacy is very prevalent in older patients, especially with chronic kidney disease. We know that from data in primary care, that more than 40% of the patients older than 65 years receive five to nine drugs prescribed by their GPs. We know that prescription of more than seven drugs rises the risk for an adverse drug event up to 82%. And 10% of the admissions to hospitals of patients older than 65 year may be attributed to polypharmacy. This is very important to notice because two thirds of these admissions are avoidable. This is why it's important to know who's at risk to receive polypharmacy. It's especially the frail older people and the terminally ill. We know that patients showing up with more than eight different diseases also tend to receive polypharmacy. It's especially the obese older people and those with a low physical and cognitive performance. The consequences of polypharmacy are severe. Due to drug-to-drug -drug interventions, the efficiency of a therapy is decreasing and the side effects are increasing. The number of adverse effects are numerous and costs are rising. Non-adherence is a problem often seen with older patients, especially in the chronic care management. This is due to the fact that polypharmacy leads to functional decline in terms of physical and cognitive functioning, but also to geriatric syndromes such as falls, cognitive decline, urinary incontinence, malnutrition, dehydration, and many others. There are currently many support systems available to support you in your prescription behavior. Part of the systems are based on explicit criteria, such as the PIM lists, list for potentially inappropriate medications such as the BEARS list for the US or the stop and start criteria in Europe. Implicit criteria ask for a more detailed and individualized assessment of the patient and the clinical evaluation. Examples for implicit criteria are the medication appropriateness index, the armor or the no tears tool. There are 26 PIM lists published so far. They differ in terms of structure and methodology, how they work. However, there are some group of substances that are common in all those 26 PIM lists. Drugs to be careful with are as follows. Anticholinergic drugs, benzodiazepines, tricyclic antidepressants, warfarin, anti-inflammatory drugs, fluoxetine, digoxin, oxybutynin. And patients at risk for polypharmacy are those with a reduced kidney function, with a reduced cognitive or sensory capacity, patients at risk for falls, hypotension, diabetics or patients with malnutrition. To give you some guidelines for daily clinical practice, we can uh, recommend to work as follows. Check the drugs at every visit of your patients with chronic kidney disease and ask open questions as you've learned it from our colleagues in Israel. Ask for over-the-counter medications, which are prescribed by pharmacists very often without any further knowledge by doctors. Ask for sleep, ask for allergies, pain and recent illnesses and check the adherence of your patients to the drug regimen together with patients or caregivers accompanying them. And always follow a cascade how you take the history from these patients. Ask who has prescribed what, when, where and why was a drug prescribed, 
And finally, how much do you really take of all these drugs? And please do not forget to document everything you have learned from your patient. This brings me to my take home message. Polypharmacy is common, independent of the definition used. Polypharmacy increases the risk of adverse drug events and the number of adverse drug events is clearly aligned with the number of drugs prescribed to a patient. The patients at risk for polypharmacy are the frail and the terminally ill patients. It's those patients with multimorbidity that are obese and have low physical or cognitive performance. The consequences are severe. Due to the prescribed number of drugs, the costs are rising. We have non-adherence and we see numerous adverse drug events that may be avoided. Finally, polypharmacy may lead to functional decline and to geriatric syndromes such as falls, delirium and loss of cognitive capacity.